Hello and welcome to E Plumasium's Fireside Chats. Now this is if you are, but hey it's something. Now, for those who don't know, there's actually some interesting stuff going on. Well first, as you can tell, first episode of uh the politics and media slash EPU files officially is turned out to be a pretty good success thus far. I mean I I think it's pretty cool. And also this is probably gonna be the last also like notice this like how it's like third positions and then Jackson Hinkle and then COINTELPRO and then we do one where it talks a little bit about COINTELPRO. Yeah, that's going to be the last time we see that kind of syncrasy for a while. I mean, kind of stinks, but whatever. But anyways, we're also close to, again, 700 something subscribers. We're close to 800. Hopefully we'll get there soon. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's get right into the news. First, I'm going to be talking about something interesting that happened. For those who don't know, who are keeping, who are not keeping abreast about UK politics, which is a good majority of you, like, I mean, for most of us, we're probably paying attention a lot to what's happening on the right side of the aisle, but I think it's best that we should actually look a little bit about what's going on on the left side of the aisle. And here's what's happening. A, a Labour member by the name of Sam Terry was deselected. Okay, so basically here's what happened. Sam Terry is a member of the Labour Party's left wing, like a part of like the left wing opposition to Keir Starmer. And there are a couple of other people who were also part of this thing. Uh, Nadia Witham, Zara Solita. Uh, <sighs> Bell Ribodadi. Yeah, yeah, and... Uh, Aspana Benjam and Ian Byrne. These are all people who are on the left side, like of the explicitly Corbyn wing of the Labour Party. And here's what happened: a lot of them have been like critical of the Labour Party. And here's one thing that is like just de detrimentally like, why is the Labour Party doing this? Okay, so Keir Starmer, what happened was he told members of the Labour Party, do not appear at a bunch of these protests that are going on because. There's currently a lot of protests in regards to the railways. And Sam Terry decided to not be a hypocrite and attend these protests. And he was, of course, now booted from the Labour Party. It's really tragic. Because this is basically what the Labour Party has done before. This is basically what Tony Blair did, but repeated. Like... In a potential, like people are afraid of like the super left wing members of the Labour Party taking over and are blaming them for the losses of whatever it was, like whatever the Labour Party's, like they were blaming them for the Labour Party's losses. So now they're going like, okay, so now it's our opportunity to clean house. They did this with the Iraq War with George Galloway and uh, a bunch of other people. Uh, but I mean, of course, George Galloway's kind of stupid, but it's like, what if this sadly becomes the fate of Sam Terry? Oh no. It's very tragic to see the Labour Party's trying to push away the people that are actually trying to stand with the Labour Party. But it's something that will end up happening again and again. Anyways, next story, it's going to continue to be about the Labour Party. Eddie Izzard has announced that they will be running as an MP for Sheffield Central. Now, Eddie Izzard, this Eddie Izzard was trending on Twitter for this. For a number of reasons. One of the biggest ones being Eddie Izzard's... I guess I should just point this out for those who don't know. Eddie Izzard looks like this. Now, this appearance definitely makes people... It'll definitely irk some people's appear. It'll it definitely irk some people. We're seeing somebody who looks traditionally masculine wear lipstick and women's clothing... And many people are were raising eyebrows to this, saying that what Eddie Izzard is doing is woman face, trying to do the whole like trans panic thing again. One of the big things about Eddie Izzard that many people keep forgetting is like, so what do we call Eddie Izzard? If we call Eddie Izzard a girl, are you gonna sit there and call Eddie Izzard a girl? And it's like, uh, Eddie Izzard is gender fluid. They use she, her, and he, him. And they, them. Like, Eddie Izzard is literally just like any all. 
This is not like that much of a big deal. What is a big deal, in my opinion, is their politics. Because, well, yes, they do seem to be like they're a staunch member of the Labour Party. Like, they're a huge member of the Labour Party, and they say that Jeremy Corbyn believes in what he says, whatever. But, let's talk a little bit about something interesting. This part, Izzard campaigned in favor of replacing first past the post with alternative vote in a system that MPs, electing MPs in 2011 referendum, that's one thing, and is a supporter of the Labour campaign for electoral reform. They are also a prominent member, they're a prominent proponent of British republicanism, believing that the UK should have democratically elected the head of state instead of the monarchy. She stated that she is a social democrat, but not a socialist. Okay, now here's the thing, what do they mean by that? Well, we can look and find out for ourselves. And here it says right here. Back when, like it says right here, they are social democrat rather than a socialist. When pressured, a tricky thing to do when interview your memory com compared trying to get all Paxman like on Izzard to rounding up the bush babies with a cattle prod, they describe themselves as more of a Blairite than a Brownite, but Brown is the leader of the Labour Party, and I want the Labour Party to get in. Oof. So, let's quickly look over. Let's quickly look over, like, Brown. Because, no, that's not, that's not what I wanted. Leader of the Labour Party. Leader of the Labour Party UK. Gordon Brown, there it is. Gordon Brown, let's check a look at their policies. I don't think they have specific policies that are right here. But basically, for those who don't know, under Brown, the party continued to use the phrase New Labour. This is basically, basically here's what happened. Tony Blair was, of course, as we all know, like the New Labour person. Like the Blairite, like of course, obviously, because he's the one in the name. Brown and Ed Miliband were sort of more members of the soft left. Meaning people who are more social democratic rather than explicitly socialist. And it seems that Eddie Izzard is painting themselves a lot more like a Blairite than that. And it's like, yikes. Definitely not a thing I'm going to be 100% standing with. But anyways, that's not really that important. Like, I mean, I looked at Izzard's platform. And Izzard's platform is pretty basic. You know, strengthen the NHS. Fight against the Tories ruining the climate. Basic stuff. I don't know what that is, especially considering they're in a they're running in a safe labor seat. So it's like, I mean, unless there's gonna be a very big backlash regarding Eddie Izzard, I don't know. But anyways, next story. Go into more local news. This is a local news story that is interesting, not just for what happened, but also just because of something that happened. Photos show former candidate burning a Raleigh City Council member's campaign sign. Former Raleigh City Council candidate Zainab. Baluk posted and deleted photos on social media over the weekend of herself holding a burning holding a burning campaign sign of incumbent city council member Jonathan Melton. Two photos were posted on Balchit's Instagram account, one showing her holding a lighted campaign sign with the downtown skyline in the background, and the other showed her watching the sign burn. They provoke, we react. The caption of the post stated, No complaints, I'm a flame, light a match. On Monday, the post contained the two photos were gone. Over the weekend, I chose to commit an act of radical resistance to call attention to the colonization of our city perpetuated by actions and inactions of the mayor, Marianne Baldwin, Melton, and others. Our voice as the people of Raleigh has been attacked and stolen from us of this council. Now, here's the thing. The only reason that they didn't, like, they took down the thing, like, this would be a Class 3 misdemeanor, and they only took it down because this is a Class 3 misdemeanor. <laughs> now... For those who don't know, because I know a lot of people probably don't even know anything about Raleigh politics, Melton is essentially the Pete Buttigieg of the cycle, to the point where he literally backed Pete Buttigieg in the last in the presidential election. Melton was basically like again, like again, Pete Buttigieg, or even like to an extent of Barack Obama, like a bright shining new face. But then it turns out no, basically just politics as usual. Z Zaina Bal Balash is, uh, she, 
she's basically, you know, running as a, well, she ran as a pretty left wing, downright socialist to an extent. Because she was endorsed the last cycle when she ran for mayor um, by Joshua Bradley, who was a Green slash Socialist Party member. And basically, what happened is, let me, let me, this is pretty much explaining, very much like, yeah. But here's the thing. The one thing that struck me with this one was former candidates, because, spoilers, I voted for her. So it's like, uh-oh, whoops. I guess that's stinks. Oh, by the way, I should mention. Nah, no, nah, I'm not gonna mention that. Anyways, let's move on to the biggest news story. Tulsi Gabbard, who sought 2020 Democratic nomination, says she's leaving the party. Okay, so let's see what happened. Former Congresswoman and 2020 presidential candidate Tulsi Gabbard announced on Tuesday that she is leaving the Democratic Party. For Gabbard, the announcement is the culmination of years in which she has been increasingly at odds with the Democratic Party and its policies. I can no longer remain in today's Democratic Party. It is now under the complete control of an elitist cabal of warmongers driven by cowardly wokeness who divided us by racializing every issue and stoking anti-white racism, who actively work to undermine our God-given freedoms enshrined by our Constitution. And this news thing has been getting a lot of people's attention. The liberals are, of course, going all apeshit over the fact that this is proof that the Bernie movement has is ultimately bad because they legitimized Tulsi Gabbard because, as we all know, Tulsi Gabbard has literally never, ever held any position prior to Bernie Sanders legitimizing her at any point whatsoever. In fact, literally... In fact, literally right before she did the whole Bernie thing, she was literally the Democratic Party's, like, shining star. Like, they were literally like, oh, Tulsi Gabbard's gonna be, like... They were saying that she would be the next sort of, like, Obama stuff. Oh, let me see what this... Let me see what this one is. Independent woman's form? What the freak is this? But anyways... It should take very much no surprise that basically almost immediately after she... Like, one of the big things that, like, for a brief second, some people were, like, holding out hope. Like, oh, maybe Tulsi leaving the Democratic Party is actually a good thing. But then, literally the next day, to secure the border and President she's Biden endorsing a, a... She's endorsing a Republican. Like... And Joe Kent, like, he's not, like, a specific, like, special Republican. This is literally just a Trumpster Republican. Like, he's literally, like, strengthen the borders, whatever, support the military, whatever. Basic, like, BS stuff. Chinese, like, stop the Chinese aggression. It's like, oh, great, so anti-war, I guess. Oh, right here. The people who are saying, like, oh, Tosi, she loves supporting single-payer. The candidate she's backing literally does not support single payer. And if that doesn't and if that isn't bad enough, it's not only that. She's backed two Republicans. She has backed literally two Republicans. Honestly, like and both of them again, very large Trumpsters. Let's take a look at this platform of the person that she's backing here. Let me see. Strong borders, whatever. Strong domestic energy, strong world leadership. Strong defense and our liberties. Okay, let's see. Let's, this one right here is basically like, Senator Hassan supports the Biden administration's failed foreign policy agenda from the disastrous Afghanistan withdrawal to the administration's aimlessness on Russia and China. U.S.'s national security is a much greater risk as it was. These guys are like war hawking on Russia. And it's like, wasn't Tulsi supposed to be, like, the super pro-Russia candidate? It's just so weird. It's not even that... Like, I mean, I guess it makes sense. But one big thing about, like, the whole Tulsi leaving to... One of the big things about Tulsi doing this whole thing is that, to a degree, some people don't even know how much sense this makes. 
Like, because literally, nobody knows what the heck she plans to do next. If this truly is... Oh, wait, did she do some more? Wait, did she endorse more? Let me see. Gabbard, blah, 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 blah. Trump back Joe Kent. Nominee Jordan. Nah. Did she back more? No, it's ba no, it's basically the same too. It's like it's so stupid. It's like she ran like it was right here. Like this is right wing stuff to oppose her on. She was a fill-in host for Tucker Carlson. It's like, really? This is so weird. Because they're like, again, like literally, December 2020. She backed Nina... 2021, she backed Nina Turner. It's like, what? And now it's literally like, she's like a super hardcore conservative now. This makes no sense. And it's literally like, I guess Tulsi really just wants to do things to get elected. But it's like, the one of the weird things is like, where can she get elected? Because, like, she can't go back to Hawaii anymore because it's an extremely blue area. The only two options that it seems that people have in their mind is the idea that she might run as a Republican in 2024 and or maybe run as a Libertarian or maybe an Andrew Yang's forward party. But... I honestly don't know what the heck Tulsi has in her head except stupidity. There's really not much else I could say on that. With that out of the way, let's move on to the main topic of this video. The Statecraft Compass Test. Statecraft is an incessance. That was completely stupid. Basically, it's a four-dimensional political compass, which gives us these different things democracy and autocracy liberty security equality competition progress and tradition statecraft is in essence a political quiz that attempts to assign percentages of four different political axes as well as an ideology that suits you the most you'll be presented by a question and then you will answer with your opinion to the question each answer will slightly affect your scores at the end of the quiz your answers will be compared to a, to the maximum possible for each value thus giving you a percentage there's a total of 46 questions Answer as though you are creating your ideal society rather than reflecting on the society you live in now. Answer honestly. Now, one of the reasons I actually wanted to do this one is because, like, I mean, I checked it briefly before I was, like, like, I mean, I didn't do much looking into it. I didn't, like, fulfill the, like, look through all the answers 100%, you know, just for the sake of, like, keeping this quiz as pure as it can be on my first take through. But I skimmed through some of the questions, and some of the questions, like, I mean... Some of the questions were written, and it seems like they literally are written by someone who was like, I'm just going to say, pretty right wing, if you catch my drift. And some of these symbols definitely do reek of like a little bit like right word, but let's just wait to see how the quiz actually pans out. First, looking at these ones, I guess, the best governing system would be anarchy, no leadership, direct democracy, Leadership by public polling, all decisions and policies are voted on equally, equal democracy, leadership is elected by officials, each vote is weighed equally, weighed democracy, leadership is by elected officials, the vote of a higher quality citizens is worth more, aristocracy, or monarchy. <sighs> Honestly, I'd probably stick with equal democracy. That one seems to be the most ideal, for the most part. Like, I mean, I get, I get the idea of, like, a... I ideal 100% like fully democracy, but truthfully, I really do think that equal democracy makes somewhat sense. You know, most people are not going to be paying attention that much to 100% all of the issues all the time, so it's best to have people who maybe understand a little bit more to be in these positions of power, but also have them be led by the people. All right, let's see more. What type of firearms should responsible citizens have access to? None, bolt action, pump action only, bolt pump action and handguns, bolt pump action and assault weapons, bolt pump action handguns and assault weapons. Okay, so I'm gonna need to learn bolt gun.
Okay, so it's basically like shotguns. So I guess I'd probably go with bolt, pump action, and handguns. Those are the ones that logistically just make the most sense to have. Like, I mean, if you want to defend yourself, those are the ones that you're most likely going to use. You're not going to use an assault weapon to defend yourself. How should a hard drug such as cocaine be regulated? Fully illegal, decriminalized, fully legal. I'm going to go with decriminalized. The, like, fully legal, if I remember correctly, when I, when I looked into, like, the idea of fully legalizing all substances and all vices, you know, like, prostitution, there were some things that definitely, like, if it's fully legalized, then you're going to lead to some other problems. But then if it's just decriminalized, you've effectively, like, removed the punitive issue without allowing the industry to be pushed into by hard court kind of stuff. How should prostitution be regulated? Decriminalized, legal to perform and purchase, illegal to profit from via third parties, traffickers, brothels, pimps. Like that, yeah. <laughs> that would, I didn't even read that it was the prostitution was the next question. Okay, how should vaccines be handled? Optional, optional, but refuse to be added to public watch list. Mandatory. Like, at this point, yeah, 100% mandatory. Like, like, I mean, if this were, like, two years ago, then I would have probably said optional. But the fact of the matter is, I figured that at the very least, a good majority of people would be, would actually go forth with vaccinations and be fine with it. But due to the fact that the COVID-19 pandemic has shown me that a lot of people are just really, really stupid and don't really understand that much about how vaccines work and everything else, it's best to just have it be mandatory. How should organ donation be handled after death? Opt in, opt out, mandatory. Hmm. Now that's an interesting question because, like, I mean, after you're dead, you don't need your organs. But then again, I think I'll have it be opt out. Like, it's the default that your organs get donated after you die, but it is like, like, you can choose to not have that be an option if that's like for a religious reason or whatever. Beyond government buildings, where should public surveillance, patrol officers, and cameras be positioned? Mm. I'm gonna just go put nowhere. Yeah, I think it's just, no. Who should be eligible to be wiretapped? Electronically spied upon without consent by the police. No one convicted found zone. Anyone greenlit for investigation? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. Because it's like, to, at, to what end? Because it's like, Maybe in a specific circumstance, maybe, but I'm thinking broadly. And it's like, do we trust the police to be fair in regards to it? So I'll just put no one. What should the repercussions be for a murder witness who is intentionally being uncooperative with police detectives? Uh, no charges, criminal charges, depending on motivation or of for non-cooperation. Criminal charges regardless of motivation. Mm. Mm. Maybe this one, like maybe criminal charge depending on the motivation for non-cooperation. Like if they're doing it to save their own skin, that's one thing. Like I don't want to be involved, that's one thing. But if they're doing it because they legitimately, mm, but then how can you prove that? I just have to put no charges because like, I, I can't trust the police officers to make a valid accusation. I can't trust them to be 100% valid with their choices. Until what age should a classroom attendance be mandatory for children? Yeah. Uh, attendance to school should probably just be mandatory. Like, I mean, I w when I was a kid, I, when I was younger, I was definitely like, uh, no, we should not be mandatory to go to school. But it's like, realistically, just go to school. Should a national school curriculum exist? No, yes, but it should only exist to help kids. To... Yes, and it should be ideological. Yes, but it should only help kids succeed in life. Like, 
it should teach the kids what they need to survive in the real world, and that would include some reforms to try and make things different. Like, for example, the tax class, one of the big things that every kid complains about, like, everybody knows, like, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, but nobody knows how to file taxes correctly. Oh, while we're on, while we're on taxes, return-free filing. How should military service be handled? Always optional, optional unless... Always optional, always optional, 100%. No draft, no draft, no matter what. When should curfews, martial law for terrorism, lockdowns for pandemics be enacted? Mm. Something like this. Like, I mean, because they added the whole lockdowns for pandemics thing. So it's like, yeah, definitely. There should be some varying levels to this enacted when necessary, but for constitutionally limited durations with cooldown periods in between. Like, that seems to be reasonably fair. Like, I mean, one of the big things about the whole COVID-19 pandemic that got people weary was the idea, like, they first enacted a lockdown, but they didn't have a specific time date. But they, like, they said, like, it'll be only for two weeks, but then they just kept extending it. And that was why many people got weary of the COVID pandemic and what the government is telling us. If they just said very clearly, like, we're going to handle the COVID pandemic like this, it will be, we'll be under a lockdown for X amount of time, and then we'll reimburse you for the time period, then things might have been different. How should the nation response, respond to terrorist threats? Weigh the severity of the threats to the cost of their demands, and then act accordingly. Never negotiate, never negotiate and prevent third parties, i.e. the family members of hostages from negotiating on their own. Weigh the severity of the threats, and then... And the cost of demands and act accordingly. Like, no doubt, of course negotiate with them. The whole idea of, like, don't negotiate with terrorists is stupid. How should the public burning of the national flag be dealt with? Legal. How should advocacy for dangerous ideologies, fascism if you're left-wing, communism if you're right-wing, be handled by the government? Uncensored, censored from political media, news networks and political candidates, censored from political media and peer-peer media, social media universities, etc., I mean, I just, this is going to be controversial for all the people in my audience, regardless of whatever one you are. If you're a lefty in my audience, you're going to be mad that I'm saying fascism should be whatever. And if you're a right winger, you're going to be mad that I say communism should be whatever. But it's like, at the end of the day, if you're just advocating for your ideas, then I don't see a problem. Like, like in my opinion, like the fascist, like I've said this before and I say it again, the fascists should have the absolute right to get on a soapbox and then spew whatever nonsense they want. And of course, the repercussions for said action will be whatever. Like, I mean, the social repercussions of them publicly identifying as a fascist, that'll be one thing. People, like, whatever. Like, whatever the, whatever the idea, whatever the problem is, they will, of course, be dealt with by the public rather than whatever maybe i would be lenient and put censored for like politicians but that's for like a specific circumstance how should the spread of false facts misinformation and conspiracy theories from individuals or organizations with significant following be handled by the government uncensored forced to air with a fake news disclaimer yeah absolutely i believe that we should let the information be out there but with the public like i mean when they did the whole like this information is false on twitter that was like 100 like and like with caleb alpin and stuff like where it's like the russian state media it's like yes of course do that and when they put rt as like russian state media or like the ch whatever china has like this is a chinese state media it's like 100 let it be known that they're fake news what type of currency should society use decentral people should barter with private currencies like gold and crypto Fixed central money cannot be printed, more stable, but less opportunity for growth. Flexible central money can be printed to provide loans for more easily, but is subject to inflation. None, no currency, central or private, should exist. People should directly exchange their services with each other instead. <sighs> I know this one over here is like from each coin to his ability to each coin to his need, but here's the thing. Truthfully, like I mean, I know they say like in your ideal society, but here's the thing. In my ideal society, people would probably still have money. Because at the end of the day, people really do love money. My philosophy fully dictates the idea. Like, I mean, my philosophy is basically like meeting leftism with reality. What should be the minimum wage? Zero. 
I mean, none of these are fifteen dollars minimum wage. But I guess, but I guess they'll. I guess I'll just put fourteen, like that. Whatever the highest one is, they didn't even give the option of like tie it to inflation. Who should be given welfare? Nobody. Dependables, children, disabled, disaster, pandemic, riot victims only. Anyone recently unemployed with a matter of the new job. Everyone, everyone should be given welfare. UBI, 100%. Like, I mean, I don't agree with, like, I mean, when I say universal basic income, I mean, like, everybody should get it. Everybody should get it. Now, granted, there should also be sliding scales for, like, like, not just everybody gets the same amount, but, like, everybody should get some amount. But some people should, of course, get more than others. How should income be taxed? Assuming this includes money through investments, income shouldn't be taxed. Income should be taxed by... Mm, hold on. Income should be taxed by a progressive rate. There should be an absolute limit to how much you can earn income. Mm. I mean, it's basically something between these two. Like a little bit of this, a little bit of this. But I think most societies as we function them would be like progressive income tax rate. Because it's like, let the people have the money or whatever, but then like have them be taxed for it. How should unspent hoarded wealth be taxed? Wealth should not be taxed. Wealth should be taxed. There should be an absolute limit to how much you can own in wealth. You know, you know what? I'll just put both of these as this. No, I think this is more fair. Like... The income, well, let, me ch let me check specific definition of income, just to make sure I'm being 100% clear on this. Income, money received, especially on a regular basis, for working through investments. Basically, like, I think, I see this as more of, like, you, the money that you earn, but this is more of the money you already have, or whatever. The mon How should inheritance be taxed? Pff, I guess I gotta put that one. How should land ownership be taxed? Land ownership should not be taxed. Land ownership should be not should be taxed by a flat rate. Yeah, I, I would probably put this one. Land should not be legally owned by individuals at all. Mm, yeah, probably. If a business owner wants to fire an employee or deny customer service, how should they be regulated? Neither firing nor denial of services require legal justification. Firing should require legal justification, but not denial of service. Denial of service should require legal justification, but not firing. Both of them should require legal justification. When should protectionism, tariffs, imports, quotas, embargoes be enacted against another country? Never, only if a country poses a political threat to us, if another country is abusing human rights or poses a political threat to us, if another country jeopardizes our local production or poses a political threat to us. Mm, I'd say all of them. I'm more of a protectionist. I want to protect American jobs. I want to protect the American jobs and, like, whatever. But, like, I would also... But, like, this is a weird thing. It's, like... It's, like... Why do they only have the, the ores for the two? That makes no sense. Whatever. When should our own companies be penalized, tax, and fine when doing business abroad? Never... If our businesses are being exploited for cheap labor, if our businesses are operating a customer will... Yeah, all of the above, 100%. They should be punished. When should a workplace democracy and workers collectively owning a company be enforced? Not enforced anywhere, enforced in public services, enforced everywhere. What intellectual property should be protected by copyright? Creative property are not practical property. Practical property, blueprints, mechanisms, but not creative property. This is going to be a hot take for a future video. I know this would be one. Uh, the, the, the closest one that I have is no intellectual property whatsoever. If you want the fullest extent, you'll find out when I do the copyright episode. But, I mean, I'll just say this. Have you ever heard of the term copyleft? That one is a little bit closer to what I think of. How should zoning laws, the state or community planning, what different pieces of land can be used for, apply? Zoning laws should not exist. Zoning laws should exist, but only for safety and environmental resources. Zoning laws should exist and be used for convenience and allow f I think for this one, I guess, how should healthcare be paid for? Public only. How should education be paid for? Public only. How should housing be paid for? Maybe this. 
Mm, no, you know what? I'll just say it. Public only. How should civil milestones such as scientific research and cultural projects be paid for? Public funding. Yeah. All right. Now here's this one. Whatever this is. When should abortion be illegal? Always. What sexuality should be socially acceptable? All of them. When should sex between two consenting adults be socially acceptable? Only if the two are married, only if the two. Every time. What is your stance on organized religion? What's your stance on race? Not a prediction or cause of behavior. Predictor or cause of behavior, but not a cause. Not a predictor or cause of behavior. What should be done with controversial historical monuments, i.e. statues of famous war criminals? Maybe this one, relocated to public view to a museum or auction. Well, actually, you know what? In this one, maybe just demolish. War criminals? Are you kidding me? What should we... What, what should the quality of life be for our prisoners? Recreational and comforting for all conflicts. How should the border of immigration be? Mmm... I guess the closest option you get is open borders. I guess this is what I was talking about. Their options are truly like 100% just like the furthest left option, the furthest right option, and then like two center right options. What is your stance on gender? Men and women are different, but should be treated equally. Men and, different, men and women are different. Men should be taken more seriously. Women should be taken more seriously. Men and women are different, but should be treated equally. This, of course, doesn't include all the many xenogenders or whatever. And plus, this is technically sex, not gender. What punishments should be applicable for the most serious offenders? Life in prison and the death penalty. Life in prison, but not the death penalty. The death penalty, but not life in prison. Neither life in prison or the death penalty. Probably this one. What are your stance on different cultures? No cultures... No cultures are better than others. Should animal rights exist? Absolutely. Besides public nudity, what appearance should society look down upon with disgust? Obesity, peacocking, obs none of the above. Are you stupid? What is the best solution to solve mental health issues such as depression or anxiety? Therapy, but not medication. Therapy and medication. Should parents be allowed to force their kids to learn particular sports and or instruments? Hmm... I'll have to actually put a neutral on sure on this one. I legitimately don't know. All right, let's see what I get. All right, democracy 75, autocracy 25, liberty 64, security 36, equality 93, competition 7, progress 90, tradition 10, and my closest ideology is... Leftism. Everyone deserves to pursue their goals without fear of extreme poverty, state intervention, or radical cultural pressure. The state should not exist to exert control over people, but instead provide services and safety net for those in need and the community at large, while punishing those who seek to exploit society for their own gain. I don't even get a specific leftist ideology, I just get leftism in general. But hey, I guess that fits. Your furthest ideology? Fascism. Based. Fuck fascists. A nation should strive to be as strong, hierarchical, and powerful as possible. Though in competitive economy, street social laws, plus centralized government, and an ethno-religion, blah blah blah, whatever. Whatever, this is stupid. But anyways, yeah, this is, this is what I get for this one. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified if a future video that comes out. And if you're interested in more content from me, you can go to my website, follow me on Twitter, join my Discord, check out my articles on Independent Political Report, or consider supporting me on Patreon.